Most people, when they set goals, they do it like this. What they want, plan to get it, deadline. And then when their goal eventually just doesn't work out, they say, ah, I didn't want it enough. I didn't know what I was doing. They're wrong. Because actual successful people, they do it like this. What they want, plan to get it, deadline. But right at the start, they add something insanely important. Insecurity around where they are right now. It reframes the entire formula. All that negative emotion, that's the fuel that propels them forward. They don't want their goals more than you do. I mean, who doesn't want to be successful, rich, insanely good looking? Instead, they're more insecure and fearful of where they are right now. Because to them, where they are right now, it's not good. In fact, where they are right now, that's as bad as it possibly gets. It's not what they're running after, it's what they're running from. I don't know, they just feel like they deserve more. They're capable of more. They're letting themselves down by not moving forward. And the result, usually pretty good stuff like motivation, effort, money, success. Maybe you feel the same way, but to harness it, you need to understand something important. Successful people aren't happy. Since taking my business from zero to profits in the hundreds of thousands monthly and chatting with millionaires from all around the world, I've noticed one super important thing. Most millionaires aren't that happy. And you probably can guess the reason. They always think that they can be doing better than they are. They're never truly satisfied. Like maybe for a moment, but then the next day they wake up and they're like, ah, there's that next thing. They're never good enough. It's a pretty crappy way to live, but it's also the exact same thing that drives them to be successful in the first place. So the questions are, if your insecurities, if they're there either way, why not learn how to use them for good? But if you're gonna harness this evil, but good, but powerful power, how do you do so without making your life one big pile of dissatisfaction? That is one big pile of shit. Desire, it's not enough. Wanting to achieve a goal, that's not enough. The more vividly you picture what you don't want, the easier it is to run away from it and towards your goal. You know, when I was in college, I was busting my ass in athletics and classes. I was trying to get good grades, you know, to catapult myself into this life of success. And at first I was so motivated, but as it dragged on, I had this annoying thought. You're not learning how to make money. See, before college, I'd already started several businesses. I knew a little bit how to make money already, and I knew what I wanted to do after college more business. But was college really making me better at business? Would I be ahead if I went ahead and graduated? Or should I just drop out now? The more I stayed at college, the more this annoying thought just persisted. You're not learning how to make money. You're not learning how to make money. You're not learning how to make money. Finally, I looked around and thought, yeah, I'm just gonna be four years behind in business when I finally graduate from here, so why don't I just learn by actually trying to make it in the world of business? If I keep studying the same thing as everyone else, I'm probably gonna get the same results and probably have a life that doesn't really excite me that much. You know, finance job, commute, boss, wow. high cholesterol probably. The more I thought about it, the more I became afraid of that life, the life that I was leading right towards. And within a few months, I dropped out. I moved across country to Arizona, started my own business, and eventually I did a few other things. Now I live in my dream house on the ocean. It's not a coincidence. This is why you wanna define your fear. Know what you're running away from. The more vivid your picture, the bigger your insecurity, Security, the bigger your motivation. Define your doubts. We need to be real. The doubts that hold you back are someone else's insecurities that have just been installed into your head at some point in time. But you can use them to drive you. When I first moved to Arizona and started my business, not everyone was supportive. Almost no one was supportive. They told me it was a bad idea. I was taking a huge risk that I screwed up my life by giving up a full scholarship at college. There was a ton of just doubt and insecurity barraging me every day. Of course, my fear and insecurity as a result of all these outside forces got even worse because now I was 18, not in college, and starting a business with just a little bit of experience. My parents, they essentially told me, good luck, idiot. What are you, stupid? And they literally said, don't expect an ounce of help from them again if I drop out and you know wanted to be an adult. I hope they were lying, but either way, if I failed, I'd be in big trouble. The doubts just grew and grew. These doubts stuck around for such a long time. Just You can't do it, and you'll have to go home and beg your parents for help. I was basically running for my life for about six years. I was reinvesting everything back in my business, so I didn't feel successful for a long time. I was personally broke, even though I owned this multi-million dollar business, but there was a turning point somewhere in that six years. I started writing down these worries and insecurities, getting them out of my head and looking at them for what they are, and two major things happened. First, I realized these weren't my thoughts. These were someone else's opinions floating around in my head, and why would I let someone else's thoughts stop me from doing what I want? And 
even worse, just making me generally feel bad. And two, I realized that I was mad that I was on my own, that it was just down to me. And a lot of my doubts were actually just me competing with myself. And when I realized that, I cared a lot less about my doubts and a lot more about seeing where I could take this life of mine and I turned that into a positive pursuit. So when you define your doubts, you realize they typically come from other people, probably a specific person, they said something to you and it just got stuck, installed in your head and you believed it. We all tend to make this mistake, but by defining your doubts and understanding them, you gain more control over your motivations and your actions. Define the kind of person you need to be. I love this quote, Aristotle, he once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence is not an act, but a habit. The person you are now is not the person you'll be when you've achieved your goal. There are differences in skill, experience, discipline, and most of all, habits. When I was a teenager, I had interest in business. It was growing in the back of my mind. I knew that there was something there that I wanted to do. I could feel it, but at the same time, a video game came out. Skyrim, you've probably heard of it. Swords, dragons, using shouts to just knock people off cliffs. How could 16 year old me possibly say no to something like that? I explored the game top to bottom. I became addicted to blacksmithing. I did everything I could in the game. It took hours of my time. And by hours, I mean probably like months. Soon though, it started to bother me how much time I was spending on this game. I had a dream of, you know, working for myself, making money, running a business, having this freedom. Yet here I was fighting skeletons on my PlayStation. I realized, that version of me who was living the life that I wanted, this life probably wasn't wasting his time fighting skeletons. And when I realized that, I never played that game or really any video games again. And here's the thing, I like video games. I, in fact, I love them so much, I get addicted like every single time. They feed that part of my brain that just wants progress above all else. Video games are so good about that, but they're just not part of my life anymore. By defining the differences between the current you and the future you that you need to become, you just give yourself this clear goal and you add fire to your insecurity. Instead of just trying to build these positive habits, learn to dislike your negative ones. Stop seeing them as just part of your life and use that dislike to help you move away from them. My biggest pet peeve of all, it's when people talk about these big things that they're gonna do or be in their life, but their actions are clearly just not even close to what's required to be that thing. You know what you need to do on a daily basis. If you have a goal, you know what you should be doing right now and every single day. Just do it! Define your relationship to fear. Now for some bad news. If you have a bad relationship with fear and insecurity, then nothing in this video is gonna help you. I, like I can say, hey, just f figure out what you don't like about your life and then you'll probably be motivated. But that won't always work if we're being completely honest with ourselves. Sometimes looking at your circumstances for what they are can be super overwhelming and you're just gonna like close up right into your shell. Instead of gaining motivation, you'll probably lose it. That's just how some people react. That's how everyone reacts in certain situations. You'll drown yourself in video games, browsing social media, or worse, YouTube videos. <laughs> Before you can turn your insecurity into motivation, you have to understand your personal, individual reactions to it. I knew a guy in college who was always talking about starting a business, but would instantly just self-sabotage himself every time he got started. He'd procrastinate, he'd become filled with doubt, and he eventually just would just say, I don't care about that idea, I'm working on bigger things now. He did this over and over again because this was his individual reaction to fear. Run away, but then just lie to himself that he wasn't actually running away, that he was in pursuit of something even more exciting, but then never actually do anything. He couldn't use fear and security as motivation because he was unconsciously running from it every single time it popped up. But guess what? This guy, he helped me realize how I often did the same, and now he's helping you, so ultimately he's helped quite a few people. I realized that I had fears and insecurities I was personally running from. I would bury my head in the sand, just like him, I would lie to myself. But if I wanted to achieve success, I had to figure out how to call myself out and change my course of behavior before it was too late. So I sat down and I wrote a table. Boring, I know, but just hear me out here. On one column, fear slash insecurity. The next, what triggers it. The final column, how I react to it. Eventually this table was just filled with nightmares, like fears and triggers and unhealthy behaviors I make as a result. Just like my fear of networking and socializing, which was triggered by just being an awkward teenager. This problem made me self-sabotage and not want to promote my businesses in person and really held me back 
in business for quite a while, but the first step here was recognizing why I was scared. And over time, I actually became more resilient and I faced those fears and I actually spent about two months cold pitching my business to 500 strange companies I'd never talked to before and that essentially killed all of my fears when it came to socializing and networking and I was, just came to realize like, oh, these are just people that just want to chat, they, they're just people who want friends like anyone else, just be friendly, it's not that bad it just worked out. Now this isn't to say like I'm perfect now, even today, you know, when I'm sitting in front of a pile of work, my initial reaction is like, uh, let me just go chat with someone. Let me eat some food. Let me pick up the phone. Let me distract myself. But I know that it's fear and that's a good thing. This means I'm about to work on something important. So before you try to use insecurity and fear as motivation, as this powerful motivation tool, make sure you know how you react to them first. Master the reaction, master fear. Eventually you have to get over it. Insecurity can give you the motivation to achieve those big lofty goals, but in the long run, you just, you wanna get over it. I know this kind of spins the whole video on its head, but hear me out. Changing your circumstances is so hard. This is why successes are so rare. It takes a huge amount of sustained effort over a long period of time. This is why tapping into every bit of motivation you can use even insecurity is so useful. But once you change your circumstances, even slightly, and built those good habits you can rely on, it's time to let go of the insecurities. Let it go. It will make you miserable. You'll just be another unhappy, successful guy. And at the end of the day, if you're successful, but unhappy, are you really successful? From here, if you're still interested in hearing what I have to say, check out Phenoma. That's where I post even more content, including everything I'm currently investing in, like this investment in Meta that made me about $10,000. We still have just a few spots available for memberships this month, so go ahead and grab it down below.